Being sectioned twice for 28 days in a psychiatric hospital, how on earth can that be good? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you how. I've written down six reasons why I think psychosis was the best thing to happen to me. So, no fluff, let's cut straight in with number one. The first reason I've got written down is that I managed to get free psychology. And not just because it's free, but I think if it wasn't and I wasn't offered it and I didn't go through the psychosis and have the team support me, I wouldn't have taken myself to any sort of counselling, psychology, therapy or anything like that. But because I was going for a bad time and trying th different things in the recovery, I thought, what's the harm? I'll give it a go. It's free. I haven't got to leave the house. It's online through, I think it was some form, a thing like Microsoft Teams or Zoom. And genuinely, it was bloody brilliant. Um, the reason I say that is because I went into it a bit sceptical, to be fair. And I didn't know anything about psychology. I thought it would be trying to understand my brain and the processes behind it and things like that. I'd heard the term CBT. I learned that while I was in hospital. And to be honest, I completely switched off. I thought, no, not another acronym, trying to confuse things. And when you're like heavily dosed up on meds, the last thing that you care about is like trying to understand something complicated. But it wasn't like that at all. And anyone that's had therapy will understand that it's, it's a relaxed environment. Um, the question's unbiased. And really the whole process allows you to understand your own thoughts. And where the great questions were asked of me, it allowed me to go much deeper. So years before even this, the early onsets of the psychosis, like a few months before it happened, it, it took me back to my school days, something which had an initial trigger, for example, in like year seven or eight or something, what it was, I was mildly bullied and this always stuck this little thing stuck in the back of my mind for years which led to me being self-conscious anxious and so there was that part but also it allowed me to understand different things about my family relationships and dynamics and there was things which I'd held on to for years um, and the psychology allowed me to break free of that and it was over the course of I reckon maybe three to four months maybe up to six but each week that went on um, and each passing month it's just this weight on my shoulders just just slowly began to lift and since then it's just sort of set me free I feel more relaxed um, comfortable with my own skin clear thinking yeah it was brilliant anyway that's enough of that on to number two it got me out of many bad habits. Those being drinking a lot of alcohol, like sometimes smoking, like doing drugs, not focusing on my sleep. Like I'd be out late. Sometimes I'd do like all nighters or be up to early hours. Those were some bad habits. Um, other ones, not necessarily bad habits, but I didn't prioritize my stress levels enough. I thought, I genuinely thought that the stress was a good thing and you could just keep going and it's all about we sort of everyone's pushed to go through this graft in grind culture I suppose is a good way to to um to describe it is that I thought to be successful I, I just had to give it a hundred and ten percent every day no rest and that burnt me out led again to like lack of sleep which had all this onset of psychosis. It, number three, it got me out of a job which I didn't find fully fulfilling. So it was in the corporate world, working in office, sort of nine to five style. And I should have left sooner because I knew my instinct was telling me that, although the team was great, it was not, it wasn't me. It wasn't, um, it didn't spark my creative side. And it, yeah, it wasn't, fulfilling it I wasn't giving back to people um, but going through the psychosis meant that I had 
this huge burst of confidence which was like fuck it let's just quit let's just go I can take on anything in the long run I'll be grateful that I did this so yeah it gave me that initial spark to quit although I was delusional when in that um, going through psychosis at the time I'm glad looking back now I did quit because I'm in a job that I love um, I'm my own boss self-employed running a small web design agency allows me to be creative and yeah it's mine so I can choose my own hours I can have naps in the day which is great because sleep is key but that's number three on to number four similar to number two but it made me evaluate everything that I do more so to understand the importance of it because we're caught between my psychosis could potentially have been drug induced but generally psychosis is caused by a number of different things so the prime ones being lack of sleep stress obviously the drugs uh, drinking alcohol anxiety trapped in your own thoughts like lack of communication and so on and when I look back it was a full spectrum of all of those things so now what just one of them the things as an example is that i'll always prioritize sleep and it doesn't mean necessarily trying to get eight hours every night but if i feel tired like to stop like working and pushing through it quite often not to rub it into those of you that have to work the nine to five jobs but i'll have a nap almost every day around like one to two o'clock um i love it I, I, that's like I've learned that you have your adenosine levels, which are the is the hormone that's released as a chemical in your brain, peaks after you have lunch. So after you eat, this peaks uh, sort of relates to the Spanish siestas. But I just get so tired and like sluggish and sluggish and lethargic. I'm trying to work away, and I just can't think clearly. And I'm just like, let's have a nap. I'll have a nap for could be like 15, 20 minutes. But if I do that, unwind get up have a quick glass of water a coffee bang like straight back onto it feeling great i say coffee it's always decaf that's another thing so focusing on minimizing caffeine like i'll drink decaf all day like if i do have a coffee with caffeine where i can't avoid it say there's a coffee shop don't do decaf or they've run out i'll have one night before 10 a.m something like that obviously i did it my previous video was that i've quit alcohol just past 500 days sober completely drug free all that's in the past if i'm out and my mates are out till late early hours i'll be like boys i'm going home i'm tired and it's pushing through that of saying like look i am going home please just like respect me and then once you're over that yeah those good things on to number five this is a big one for me a really big one is that it taught me about mental health and I I was a bit naive before because I didn't really know anything about I I had heard of conditions but I didn't know much about any of them and I'd never known I didn't know what psychosis was and I didn't realize what bipolar was I thought bipolar was mood swings up and down it can be but yeah obviously learned what psychosis was learned what schizophrenia is bipolar i've learned more about anxiety and depression um autism aspergis and then how to deal or how to communicate with those people and and when you can understand that it allows you to be a much better communicator to everyone so yeah and you realize that this sort of comes in to the next part as well is that almost everyone that you speak to when you open up about your mental health is also suffering with something on some sort of um in some percentage i'd say or some some form um you'll open up and because you're talking about it in your vulnerabilities and it allows people to talk about theirs they feel comfortable doing that they feel human and then when you're doing that and you realize that oh it's everyone that i'm speaking to it makes you feel better and feel more normal yourself so my next point is that it's given me a different perception on the world and the people within it because before 
I'd feel like, like am I the only one that feels like this anxious like I'm the, I'm the only one that has this social anxiety can feel down blah 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 and it's just everyone and there's a thing called the spotlight effect so say you go you walk into a room the spotlight effect is that you think the spotlight is on you you think everyone's looking at you but the truth is everyone's thinking that so everyone's thinking or self-conscious about themselves and they're thinking about people caring about them that's not the truth so when you learn about that it's like actually let's just be comfortable with who we are it's all right if we get nervous just talk about it let's have a laugh about it everyone else feels it anxiety is a good thing it gets you out of certain situations it's a survival technique and mechanism going back to our ancestors so they're the six points i want to keep these videos raw short sweet unedited i hope you're enjoying them thanks for watching be sure if you do like it i'm not forcing you but it helps the channel grow if you like it like the video subscribe and your comments are really appreciated all the feedback so and if you have got any questions want any support yeah drop it in the comments i'll reply to all of them thanks for watching speak to you guys soon